Just before 9 a.m. Eastern, Americans awaken to shocking pictures from New York. I just saw the entire uh, top part of the World Trade Center explode. Minutes earlier, at 8.45, a hijacked plane had slammed into one of the World Trade Center towers. 9.03 a.m., a sickening sight. Second plane crashes into the Trade Center. See the damage to that about the middle of the building. Just incredible what we are witnessing here. People on the ground look on in horror as workers in the Trade Center towers fall or maybe even jump to their deaths. 9.30 a.m., the president in Florida. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. The airport being evacuated, they need to go home. 940, all American airports have been closed, but there are still planes in the sky. And minutes later, one of them crashes into the Pentagon. Several Army officers I talked to reported hearing a, a big explosion, seeing shards of metal. 959, as the Pentagon burns, the South Tower of the World Trade Center buckles and collapses. Ten twenty nine, the second Trade Center tower collapses. An American landmark is in ruins. Here it comes. I'm getting behind a car. Thousands fear dead, lower Manhattan shrouded in smoke and debris. Ten forty eight, police in western Pennsylvania confirm that a fourth hijacked plane crashed a half hour earlier outside Pittsburgh. The enormous loss of life. Please. Noon, shock and disbelief. As the dead and wounded are taken to East Coast hospitals, officials in New York and Washington report a shortage of blood and appeal to Americans to donate their blood. Late afternoon, New Yorkers are evacuating Lower Manhattan by the thousands. Parts of the city unrecognizable. A third building at the Trade Center, this one 47 stories, collapses. At Bellevue Hospital, an official says, quote, it is a catastrophe of unparalleled proportions. Peter Vile, CNN. New York. Well, now I want to show you uh, the latest pictures that we have from the aftermath of the terror attack in New York. We are now going to roll some pictures for you. The latest nighttime scene. The rescue effort underway. As we watch these pictures, we can share the emotion of many people on the scene who have been struck by both the enormity of the tragedy and the very small number of people who have emerged to be helped or accounted for. Rescue workers sifting through the dust, debris, also dealing with their emotions of the horrific scene. Some have described like the eruption, like the aftermath of an eruption of a volcano. There's so much dust. Those firefighters you're seeing at work now are carrying an insupportable load. Not only are they dealing with the aftermath of this terrible attack, but they know that hundreds of their colleagues, hundreds of firefighters who were first on the scene helping the people inside the Twin Towers are unaccounted for. Firefighters themselves, hundreds of them, are among those feared dead. Also not clear how stable the structures are. A third structure, Building 7, collapsed later in the day, hours after uh, the first two structures, the Twin Towers, collapsed. The lack of clarity is the stunning thing. This is the 21st century, the information age, and this attack, much of it, happened on live television, and yet even now, it's not clear who carried out the attack, how they managed it, or how many people have been wounded, how many people have been killed. The numbers that we have gotten are still so low, the scale of the tragedy in New York and Washington so great that authorities have been reluctant to speculate on what the final toll will be. And as we heard from CNN's Garrick Utley in New York just a short time ago, it may be weeks before all of those who are unaccounted for are pulled from the rubble of New York City.
all of these pictures are very close up. In, in other images that we have seen of New York, what is so striking is that there is still smoke darkening the night sky, the smoke above lit by the lights that are lighting this scene, the emergency crew lights, 20 trucks or so of spotlights and searchlights that have been brought in to assist the work. We're all watching this, but many people have a much more direct attachment, a much more direct link to some of the people who may be in those buildings. The U.S. Justice Department has set up a hotline for families of those who may have been wounded or killed in these attacks. They're encouraged to call 1-800-331-0075. There will be information about the victims as well as the hope that they'll be able to provide authorities with information. The airlines have also made available telephone numbers for those concerned about family members, relatives of American Airlines passengers seeking information can call 1-800-245-0999. United Airlines has friends or family members seeking information on their flights can call 1-800-932-8555. United also says it will post information on its website. That's www.united.com. And joining us now for more perspective on Tuesday's events is terrorism expert Magnus Ranstorp of St. Andrews University in Scotland. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Ranstorp. First of all, how could this kind of an attack of this magnitude, so well organized and concerted, have happened? 